yeah uh, good afternoon students am i audible yes sir okay, okay so <clears throat> just now i had a class from uh, um, till 11:40 so i joined just now i have started the recording yeah i hope everybody are safe and uh, everybody are healthy yeah so as of now there are 20 students who have joined now let me start sharing the content first I hope the first slide is visible to everybody. Can somebody come in? Yes, sir. Yeah. Just, uh, keeping that in the full screen mode. And let me also start sharing the content. Uh, which is a web page. Uh, web page GDB online. Okay. Yeah. So, is the online editor is uh, visible? I'm just switching between the full screen PPT and the uh, the IDE. Can somebody acknowledge using microphone whether uh, you are? Yes, sir. Sir, both are visible. both are visible okay got let me check the uh, list of participants the students 173 has joined okay coming to list of participants there are 27 students so meanwhile the <coughs> other uh, friends joins uh, if anybody has any specific uh, uh, problems in terms of connectivity or in terms of uh, you know the procedure being for delivery of the content using this online classes uh, which is confined to c++ course uh, through me uh, if something needs to be improved uh, you are free to talk to me right now and you can address any of the concerns uh, anybody has any networking problems i think yesterday <clears throat> somebody had 139 Roll number one thirty nine. Is he present? He or she? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, have you joined? Um, are you able to follow the classes? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, why your class is so silent? Even virtually also, no acknowledgements. Whenever I send any mail or uh, I mean not mail, uh, mainly in the WhatsApp, nobody replies. <laughs> Now also nobody is replying. Thing like that. No, something is like that. see we are all humans talk to talk to us if you don't talk it is like you know i am teaching to walls <laughs> okay sir uh i think who is responding if i am correct uh, is pratyumna 130 pratyumna only right yes sir uh, i yes sir there is another guy who sits in the front specs i lost his uh, number and uh, name also I, i don't i can't recall Wait. harshit yeah, harshit i i think so i, I don't know. is he is he online did he join 
yes sir uh no sir not yet okay but fine. he will join sir yeah so list of participants there are 32 still 28 participants needs to be joined and today we are discussing a very important topic which is uh, introduction to data structures that is uh, the non linear programming 121 is absent 127 is also absent 130 one 131 33 34 35 36 37 38 all are absent 36 is present now then after uh, 40 41 is absent 3 44 7 Forty nine, fifty two, fifty four, fifty nine, sixty, sixty two, sixty eight, seventy, seventy nine, and eighty. So these twenty students are absent. Twenty one students. Okay, so <clears throat> it is again hang on for another one or two minutes. So meanwhile, uh, how is your comfort level in C plus plus this virtual platform? Okay, let me ask specifically some selected roll numbers, which I am randomly picking up. One twenty five, Anusha, if I am correct. Are you able to follow Anusha? Chat box. Let me, chat box. One twenty two. Yes. One twenty five. Anusha. One twenty one. Abhignya is absent. Uh, one. One twenty three. I think Akshata. Hello. Akshay, yes, sir. Akshaya, okay. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Can you able to follow? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Then let me select somebody from thirty. Thirty. There are only three students. Okay, thirty-six. Who is thirty-six? Okay, thirty-two. I think he has unmuted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then somebody in forty, forty-five, one forty-five. Yes, sir. I am able to follow. Okay, good. Then one fifty-one, Rishi. No, uh, please. Uh, uh, all of you, you can probably you know uh, write your uh, names. Otherwise, it is like uh, calling business. One twenty. <laughs> Okay, so you when you join, you join your name. I mean, probably your roll number dash, and then uh, uh, whatever friends will call. Okay. So Rishi, can you able to follow? I think you are using the headset. Probably I can use. Let me take take the chart. One fifty one. Yes. Okay. So if you are not uh, having the facility of audio, you can use the chat box. Then let me also check. Twenty uh, one and one sixty eight are saying it is unable to connect. What are the numbers? One sixty. One sixty eight and one twenty one. Oh, ask them to try. What else? Do one sixty eight was facing same yesterday also, sir. Sir, same problem yeah. with same problem with one thirty three also. Yeah, 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 sir, class also same problem. Uh, maybe uh, what the students can do is use some other uh, device, okay? And you use some other user ID, not Gmail ID. And uh, uh, after deploying the application, you start the registration afresh. Only at the time of joining, we need the number. See, there there are many ways. Okay, because of one or two students, I cannot. Uh, 
cancel the class right so just to drop a message to them uh, probably into your whatsapp whatsapp or whatever uh, means of communication is available to try to join by using some other device preferably it is better to join with a laptop with uh, the internet okay so let me i think i was collecting some random feedbacks so let me check uh, let me take 64 yeah 164 uh, i think he or she 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 is uh, 164 can you able to listen sir okay how's the connectivity is it is it okay at your uh, home home place yes sir it is okay sometimes it Okay, Sometimes good. Okay, fine. Good, good. Next, somebody in 70s, 171, Srija, right? 171. Yes, sir. Vaishnavi, sir. Vaishnavi, Vaishnavi. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, now there are 45 students. Uh, I have already started uh, recording the session. Now, as usual, drop your numbers in the chat box. drop your uh, attendance numbers i mean roll numbers in the chat box so as to consolidate and also mention those two numbers uh, who had the problem who has the problem that is 121 and uh, some other number somebody said i think pratim has joined abhignya has joined good okay so 46 students have joined fine Okay, so those who have joined, uh, please uh, drop your uh, roll numbers on the chat box for just for cross reference. I hope all our friends, uh, your classmates, you are all fine. There are no, you know, I mean, cases as such, specifically COVID-19. Very, very annoying situation outside. Very terrific. Okay, so let us start the session. There are 47 students and uh, as I said, I have started unable to join. Now that is seven is unable to join. Okay, fine. Ask them to join some other, uh, by using some other means. Okay. So, <clears throat> today's class, uh, we will start the introduction to data structures. Okay, so there are 47 students as of now. So, meanwhile, if any other student, 49. Okay, 49 are there. If anybody joined, uh, ask them to drop their uh, roll number. Okay. So this is a very important class which I am engaging in today's session. And today you will understand what are the different categories of data structures. Uh, I think some other request is coming. Okay. Okay. They, this is all attendance. Okay. Fine. Drop your numbers. Okay. Uh, can somebody acknowledge uh, about the clarity of my audio? Is my audio is audible and uh, is it okay? Shall I proceed? Please use anyone who is yes, using yes, sir. the microphone. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, yes. has raised a hand. Yeah, yes. 176, any problem? 176. No problem. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, in today's class, we will understand the very important uh, aspect of data structures, which is uh, uh, very useful for writing the efficient uh, programs. And we will, uh, you, you, you will soon uh, appreciate the importance of data structures. So first of all, what is, what is the meaning of a data structures? Or uh, did we study data structures till now? Considering our uh, last uh, um, last around uh, seven months of engagement, both uh, in the first semester as well as in the second semester, did we studied any data structure? Yes, sir. Yes, which data structure we have studied, and can you justify how do you classify that? Structure? Sir, arrays. Yeah, arrays. Arrays is a data structure. 
Uh, yeah, that is correct. Yes, sir. I think so. Yeah, it is correct. Yeah. It is nothing but a data structure. Okay, so let us recall from the concept of arrays. Let us recall from the concept of arrays why we have studied arrays. So if I if we again revisit the basic motivation to study arrays was 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 that in order to represent many different variables for example if you are asked to write a c program or a c++ program to store marks of 60 students if we don't have the concept of arrays then the coder needs to typically declare 60 variables which is tedious cumbersome the life will be miserable okay so uh, in order to provide or facilitate the coder to uniquely represent a specific record of the similar data type which serves as the core uh, basic definition of an array wherein an array is defined as the collection of homogeneous or same data elements which are grouped together under a single tag name and by using the subscript it is possible it is possible for the coder to fetch the data at any given nth location or nth record isn't it this is why we have studied arrays yes or no yes sir okay yes sir now consider a scenario okay so i mean the motivation why we have studied array is clear so having studied arrays which we have been coding for almost six to seven months now what are the advantages this is the advantage the advantage is you are bringing in all variables into a single tag but however there is a restriction you are in a position to combine similar data items only okay now what are the disadvantages of arrays the disadvantages of arrays there are two disadvantages one is only similar data items needs to be needs to be needs to be grouped you cannot group dissimilar data items isn't it and the second disadvantage is array memory has to be continuous okay now the first disadvantage which is the similar data items alone has to be grouped is now eliminated by using the so-called concept of a structure. Using a structure, you can combine dissimilar data. But again, when you use array of structures, then again, you are talking about similar records, which are of structure type. Okay, so these are the things which we have been doing uh, till now. Okay. Everybody come in, is it okay? So, yes, sir. Yeah. So, assume that you are doing some implementation, which I'm also I have also started uh, just coding it. I hope the editor is visible. So, using namespace std, so you have written you you are trying to write the main application. Okay. So, assume that you have defined a variable int v1 that you have defined another variable in v2 and so on and so on okay and you are talking about array let us say int a of max initially you are saying that this is zero now also recall arrays are classified into two types one is a static array second is a dynamic array now what is the advantage of uh, static array and just now we have summarized many variables uh, need is being eliminated it makes the programmers life simple because with only one subscript as i have quoted in line number 11 you are in a position to represent the entire records isn't it but what is the disadvantage of static arrays what is the disadvantage of static arrays if you write memory is wasted as defined let us say max let us say I have started to maintain uh, uh, the record of 60 students. 
okay now here at what time memory is allocated to ea at what time compilation time yes or no compilation time you are asking you are asking you are asking the compiler to identify 60 consecutive addresses of each having a capacity of 2 bytes in theory this is 60 cross 2 in theory this is 120 bytes of continuous memory okay and then you are uh, assuming that this is available and then you are continuing your program no this is how you declare a static array now what is the disadvantage of static array the disadvantage of static array is again there are two disadvantages disadvantage number 1 is suppose user is interested to maintain only first five row numbers that means you have zero you have one you have two you have three you have four that means only five is used so you are unnecessarily wasting another 55 records isn't it suppose user is willing to maintain let us say two sections class let us say a user wants to maintain a total of 120 records you are asking to represent only 60 so in both the cases your static array is failed that means a limited number of records the limited number of records is the main problem in static array this is overcome in dynamic array by using what concept by using what concept pointer so let us pointer. yeah you have a array let us say b probably m for marks initially you are saying that m is pointing to null okay then you are asking the user to enter the value of n you are asking the user to enter the value of n and whatever user is entering let us say n could be 5 or it could be or it could be 10 or it could be 120 whatever user is supplying the size you have then asked the memory allocation new in order to allocate integer at run time of n size or no so this is static static array now this is dynamic array so what are you bringing uh, what are you um, getting in dynamic array you are typically scaling an array based on whatever uh, number of records that user is uh, willing to maintain only that number of records only you are you are creating so assume that the memory is available that means if m is equal to still null you are saying that i don't have ram and then otherwise otherwise from here onwards your m of 0 till m of n minus 1 is available so this is the only advantage is the only advantage that you will get in dynamic array when compared with this so called static array yes sir no because whatever you are supplying only that much quantum of uh, memory you are asking okay respond yes sir no yes sir yes yes sir Good. now consider a situation please uh, keep this uh, pseudo code in your mind you have certain variables already pre assigned you are asking to allocate a static array probably a static array and you are asking to allocate a dynamic array now in the next 10 or 15 minutes i am going to uh, represent what is the problem in dynamic array the problem in static array is you are fixing the size second problem is memory is continuous what is the problem in dynamic array in dynamic array though you are not fixing the size you are again reinforcing the uh, allocation of your uh, uh, 
memory to your array needs to be continuous. Allocation of memory again here also it has to be continuous. Now I am going to take a case study. Okay, I am going to discuss about a an example where if you are either using a static array or if you are using a dynamic array in both the cases your memory allocation will be collapsed or it will be failed. Let us look into this. Okay, so is this uh, pseudocode is in your mind? Shall I start going to the presentation and then I'll use something called white code? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let me start. Uh, so please remember you notice that you have already declared certain variables and then you want to declare a array. So let me start using a whiteboard. Probably for the sake of Cisco WebEx people who have joined from video systems or video calculations can't be required. Okay, I need to share this. Okay, so is the whiteboard is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. Okay, so what I will do is let me again uh, rewrite a sort of pseudo code. So you have a function. Okay. Where you have already declared some variables, probably int v1, then int v2, some variables. Content what I am typing is also visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please always interact with me like a human. Okay, so I can't go to chat box. It is like a classroom. Okay, so once I am raising any question, let it be you know interactive. Then only you know I'll also get a feel that I am teaching to humans. Otherwise, as I said, uh, it will be like I'll be teaching teaching to walls. Okay. So assume that there are variables okay, sir. Two, yeah, v1 and v2 and uh, like, likewise you have many variables. Okay. Now after some state uh, or after some lines assume that you want to create a variable of let us say let me mention the size of 60 and then you want to initialize this with the 0. Okay. So what I will do is let us uh, let me draw the memory map. Okay, so I am drawing a memory map. Now this is uh, something which is called as a heap. This is heap, but also now notice uh, before that what is heap? Where is heap? Heap is memory. What is heap? Heap is in which memory? RAM. 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 Good, correct. It is in data memory. You have some other uh, thing in RAM. What is that? Stack. What is that? Stack. stack. Different? Yeah, stack is different. Heap is different. Heap is something which is ready to be uh, allocated to your variables. Okay. So now assume that this is your memory. And also assume that you are working with a computational system with very, very limited RAM. Assume that your RAM capacity is uh, probably, you know, you have uh, 1 KB of RAM. You have 1 KB of RAM. That means your, your physical address it is starting from 0 and 1 KB means it is uh, 10 bits, 2 to the power 10. So your last address will be F, 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 F. Now you may ask why, why are you taking 1 KB? Why I am taking 1KB is, see, uh, for desktop computing systems so that your uh, other colleagues or other friends who are coding in, in the so-called branches of CSE and IT, they have uh, 1GB or 2GB or 4GB of RAM. Okay. But for uh, dedicated embedded electronic products where cost is a major factor, you will have adequate RAM. Adequate data memory will not be there. Example, uh, take the example of uh, the black and white mobile phones uh, which are uh, available at 1000 rupees. 
you don't have you don't have even uh, 512 mb of ram there you will have probably around uh, one quarter uh, mb that means uh, 128 mb of ram okay or if you take a bus ticketing system or uh, you take uh, what yeah you take a bus ticketing system you know what do you mean by bus ticketing system so for us it is a computer it has a cpu it has, it has keypad it has uh, lcd okay so it is a microprocessor based system so there if you pump uh, too much of ram then the cost of the product will go high okay so as a result if you are asked to code on memory constrained applications like this where cost is a major concern and if you as a coder have defined certain variables in a function like this with an intention of allocating or creating an array which is a of 60 which, which is an integer with a scenario assuming that your data memory is of 1 kb such that the variable v1 are you with me are you following yes sir so yeah, such sir, that sir. The variable v1 is occupying here, the variable v2 is occupying here, variable v3 is occupying some space here, and so on. I have just taken some three variables. Okay, so what is this shaded portion? This is the area, uh, this is the memory which has been occupied by v1. This is the memory which is occupied by v2. This is the memory which is occupied by v3. Now my intention is I want to allocate or I want to maintain an array whose uh, total number of records is 60. So technically speaking, I need to have continuously how many number of uh, bytes? 60 into 2, which is 120 bytes. Now assume that here you have you have only probably uh, let me use uh, yeah. So here you have a capacity of uh, maybe 80 bytes. Here you have a capacity of, uh, let us say, uh, some bytes. Here you have a capacity of, let us say, uh, another 60 bytes. So, up to 1 KB. So that means you imagine a scenario that some variables randomly are occupied here and there. And at no point you are getting a continuous 120 bytes of memory. But continuous, uh, uh, even though continuous 120 bytes of memory is not available, is the memory of 120 bytes is available in your system or not? Yes, sir. It is available. That means you are not an efficient coder. That means you are not an efficient coder. Why? Because technically speaking, you have 100 plus 60 plus 80. That means uh, uh, 240 bytes, leaving the other memory map. So 240 bytes of physical memory is available and you are saying that uh, you are not in a position to declare an array and store the contents of an array because you are not getting a continuous memory of 120 bytes. This is the major problem with both static arrays as well as in dynamic arrays. Have you understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So at any given point of time, if I came across a situation where I am not in a position to allocate the required size of 60 multiplied by 2, which is equal to, let us say, 120 bytes, then immediately after this statement, compiler will throw an error saying that, I am sorry, you are demanding, you are demanding memory which is a continuous of 120 bytes because i have randomly allocated some other memory segments to your other variables now what happens to your application your application will be will be crashed your application will be crashed because memory is not available you are not in a position to allocate memory then how, how do you uh, how do you have data how do you store the data so therefore, in order to address this second main disadvantage, which is there both in static array, which I have narrated in this example, as well as in dynamic array. Let us let me take uh, dynamic array. So let me now highlight this part. Now assume that this part is not available. 
assume that this part is not available okay now after v1 v2 and so on assume that assume that you are now declaring a dynamic array so let us say you are saying int star uh, i have taken star m is equal to null now here again you have to ask the user to enter the value of n no now user whatever uh, whatever user is entering as n you have to accept it uh, can somebody respond is my whiteboard is visible yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, are you in a position to understand what what i am technically justifying the disadvantages of both static array static array i have just completed now i am also extending the problem with the dynamic array yes sir yes sir assume that n is equal to let us say here in my case n is equal to probably let me keep uh, one uh, maybe 80 n is equal to 80 now user wants to store 80 records that means when when you say that m is equal to new int of n i'm starting from here so he, here you have to check whether null is uh, still m check this yes or no yes sir So therefore, at this point, yes, user has entered as eighty. What is the amount of memory he is demanding? He is demanding a total of one sixty plus eighty. What is that? One hundred and sixty bytes. Do you have one hundred and sixty bytes continuous? No. Continuous? Do you have? Continuous? Do you have anywhere? One hundred and sixty bytes. I am assuming the other part also. You don't have one hundred and sixty bytes. following but do you have yes, sir. but literally do you have 160 bytes minimum it is there if you take yes, bytes from here and if you take another 60 bytes from the lower part 160 bytes is available so how can you say that uh, i cannot declare a dynamic array now this is the problem so in order to overcome these two problems in order to overcome these two problems which is a single problem which is happening in two situations the first situation is in static arrays and the second situation is in the dynamic arrays we need to come up with a strategy of of using the unused memory blocks that are available or that are left out that that are ready to be used by the application some strategy needs to be opted hello yeah hello yes sir okay so some sir we can use the dynamic sir yeah sir we can use self referential structures no sir come again we can use self referential structures yeah yeah that is the introduction part i am coming to that only okay i am coming to that only i am coming to it only but i am just uh, technically i am justifying what is the advantage uh, the what is the need to study self referential structures what you have mentioned is the solution okay here okay okay sir okay So, yes sir please uh, look into the uh, right hand side of your memory map diagram where i have highlighted the red parts which are preoccupied memory locations which are physical memory locations that belongs to three variables v1 v2 and v3 which causes 80 bytes of memory being unused down portion and 100 100 bytes of memory being not used in between v1 and v2 and 60 bytes is not used between v2 and v3 and so on so these unused memory blocks are called as holes memory holes these unused memory blocks 
which are which needs to be effectively utilized these are called as these are called as memory holes these are called as memory holes these holes has to be used properly you follow in are you in a position to follow yes sir yes sir yes sir there is a hole here there is a hole here there is a hole there is a hole uh, here and there is a hole here okay so these things needs to be effectively utilized so these are called as memory holes and this is extremely serious case this is a very serious program uh, i mean a pitfall or the disadvantage because technically speaking memory is available and logically speaking memory is not available okay so to overcome this you need to bring non linearity in your programming now let me save this slide uh maybe yeah let me save this because once i switch from this to other slide uh, i'm going to lose this content so i'm sa uh, i'm saving this as uh, ecc one file pdf it may be useful for you for your future reference when i start sharing it into the groups okay yeah i have saved it now let me go to the uh, presentation i think this might not be visible because i need to reshare this because in webex if i enter into a enter into this uh, uh what the board uh, one then it will not be visible is my slide is visible no now is the slide is visible yes can somebody respond data structure slide is visible sir yeah, introduction yes, sir. slide is visible right yes sir yes sir yes sir let me, let me check the list of participants list of participants 53 participants okay fine so oh, i think i okay so let me go to the second slide that is the motivation for data structures so do you now uh, understand what is the need to pay an extreme serious attention in order to effectively or uh, uh, redefine a strategy or a policy based code such that even though logically i mean even though physically the memory is not continuous you have to come up with uh, the the logic to store these memory holes in order to store the data okay so in computing typically data structure is uh, defined as the systematic way or a structured way of representing the data in order to store in the data memory that is what we have done in array now i have discussed what are the problems with uh, static arrays and just now i have discussed with a memory map diagram what is the disadvantage with even the dynamic array wherein we are we as a coder we are unable to solve the problem with uh, uh, both the static arrays and the dynamic arrays if the memory is only continuous why is it important it is important because in terms of execution speed when you compare it with the processor speed and how much uh, how much uh, size of your uh, variables both in terms of the program size as well as the data variables uh, data memory size program size is nothing but your rom size data memory size is nothing but your ram size ram is nothing but heap so when is it important it is important for compilation time for those arrays where you are using static and it is important for run time for scalable arrays if you are using dynamic arrays so in both the situations you have this problem what problem continuously memory is not available holes are available how, how do i use so in order to address that you need to study something called as non linear data structures 
So this is where data structures are typically classified into two types. One is called linear data structures and second is a nonlinear data structure. So under linear data structures, we have already studied 1D, 2D, 3D arrays. We have also studied how to represent a single string or array of strings. Single string is nothing but a single string is nothing but a one dimensional character buffer with an alternator. And array of string is nothing but array of pointers where each pointer points to the starting address of uh, that record specific first character of that name. And subsequently, if there is a need to combine, if there is a need to combine dissimilar data items, then you can use a structure. And if you want many such things, then you have to use array of structures. So all these three comes under linear data structure programming. This is what we have already done. Clear? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now there exists another segment of computational uh, logics that needs to be figured out under nonlinear data structures. Why th there is a name called nonlinearity? Because Wherever there are holes, you have to use. So memory is here and there. So they are nonlinear. So what are the strategies which are available to effectively utilize these memory holes in computational logics for those electronic products where you have extremely tight memory constraints? Specifically, you have very limited data memory. They, then you cannot use directly an array like int of 60. One. And you cannot even use a dynamic array asking n by the user and uh, assuming that n is available. It may not be available. Okay, so in order to address this, you have to explicitly use the nonlinear notions of representing the data in a structured way. So under this, you have linked lists, trees, and graphs. Trees and graphs are not there in the syllabus, and in linked lists also, not everything is there in the syllabus. In linked list, there are three types of linked list, singly linked list, doubly linked list, and circular linked list. Now, what are we doing? Why are we studying this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, the portion which I have highlighted is the one that the content will be discussed from this class onwards for another two to, I mean, for another uh, uh, one or two weeks upcoming classes. So we will be keep on coding singly linked lists. Now before starting our actual implementations and appreciate the need of a singly linked list, sorry, not need, the implementation of a singly linked list, you need to understand how does this nonlinearity is coming in in, in, the, in, the, in the computational uh, problems like this. So you need to be clear in terms of motivation. That means, what is the reason to study linked list? Is that clear now? Linear yes, is not available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So a quick summary on the so-called array fellows. Okay. Whether it could be a static array or it could be a dynamic array. You talk about the same data type. Because you, if you use array of structures, you are eliminating this. But main serious problem is memory must be continuous. That is a dangerous problem, specifically for uh, electronic coders, because you you cannot just like that you cannot imagine that array is available. And second problem is you need to specify the size of the array right at the compilation time if it is a static fellow, or at the runtime if it is a dynamic dynamic array. But in both the cases, memory has to be has to be continuous. So therefore, there could be a probability and possibility of system failure for those systems where you are dealing with extremely tight memory constrained computing systems, such as the electronic systems which I have cited, where you have very limited data RAM. Example, if I declare marks of 60 students to represent, there is a likelihood, there is a possibility that I may not be having 120 bytes continuous just like the memory map diagram that I have explained. 
So when you are working with a system where you are not in a position to declare an array of uh, continuous 120 bytes is not available, then how can you think about uh, maintaining three sections uh, students of uh, 60 in each section with a 2D array? This again is a nonsense code. Because first, first fellow itself is not available. How can it be uh, the second fellow will be available? It is not available. So therefore, we need to come strategic implementation of how do you solve this problem where you have memory holes putting together, it is available, but you cannot use arrays. So the answer is, it is by using using linked lists. Okay. Sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, in a class there are 60 students means total 120 bytes. Also. Yeah, total 120 bytes. That is correct. If there is no continuous by uh, continuous uh, 120 bytes, if there is 80 and 40, we can create two arrays and send some data to this and some into that array. No, the point here is how do you know that you got 80? How do you know that you got 40? <laughs> I have just taken an example. Compiler randomly picks up, right? Randomly, that fellows will throw v1 variable v1, v2, v3. So you can't even predict uh, how much memory continuously is available. Did you got my point? Did you understood what I'm telling? Yes, sir. Okay. So in the in the example, what I have shown in the whiteboard. 80 and then probably 60 and then 40 is available. That for our analysis purpose I have taken. Who knows at the time of uh, programming when you are compiling with uh, such systems where your memory is very less. Initially that V1, V2, V3 could have been mapped very nearer and uh, probably 120 bytes could be available when you are testing. Okay. And when you are actually showing the same uh, tested application in front of the customer, at that time, uh, assume that the hardware fellow is allocating V1 exactly in the way that I have mapped and in front of the, in front of the customer, your system fails. So you, you will never know when the system will fail. Are you following? Sir. Did you understand what I have told? Yes, sir. Yeah. So therefore, we have to study the non-linear programming and uh, the non-linearity is introduced by using the singly linked list in this course as the introductory content of your second semester. Very, very important. This is very, very important. You need to understand why are we studying this. Now, at this point, if you have any doubts, please raise. Anybody has any doubts? Okay, everybody are silent. Seven absentees. Okay. Yeah, I think one twenty three is saying something. Sir. Yeah. Any doubts? Sir, where our code will store, sir? Yeah, very good question. See, uh, there are always two memories. One is the program memory, second is the data memory. Okay, so even though the power is off, code should not be off. That means once the power is on, you have to uh, fetch the starting point of your main and then your program has to run. That means program must be stored in the program memory, ROM hard disk. Now hard disk is a wake fellow. See hard disk if you remember, uh, so, sorry, if you see your hard disk, uh, you are saving the data and also you are retrieving the data. Yes sir, no. See, assume that you are typing in a word document. Okay, so you have just uh, started uh, typing some thesis document or some MS Word file. Now when, once you once you save it, control yes, and then once you close it, the, the data is saved. Now where the data is saved, it is in hard disk. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes sir. Now again, yes, sir. 
again when i double click that uh, word document uh, is it possible for me to edit now i can edit it yes sir no yes sir it is allowing you to edit now tell me whether hard disk is rom or ram if it is rom read only memory then only one time it has to give the permission if it is ram random access memory then the moment once you are closing the data has to go, go off that's why i said hard disk is a very tricky fellow did my question make sense are you understanding what i am asking yes sir yes sir so if i save the data if it is rom read only memory as the name says it is read only memory you cannot uh, edit again but you are editing on the other hand if it is if if your hard disk is uh, ram random access memory which is not it is not ram it is not random access memory if it is ram then whatever contents you are saving once you are closing then the contents should go off which is not happening then who is hard disk it is secondary memory okay so the question i think some of the student has asked where the program has to be saved the program has to be saved technically speaking in rom read only memory for those systems that i have just cited like bus ticketing systems and other handheld devices once the power is go gone and again the power is up then it has to start booting once the booting is completed then your program has to start executing that is nothing but it has to enter into main okay so your program that is nothing but your instructions must be saved in rom now in hard disk what are you doing you are saving that in the form of a dot exe now once you double click that dot exe that is annotating as if it is in the program memory okay now data memory ram is all together is a different fellow without ram you cannot design a system why because temporary data processing needs to be done and ram you will have both the fellows one is stack and second is heap okay can somebody come in are you able to understand sir yes sir yes sir okay so till now what are we now i just summarized the classification of different data structures and i have introduced that there is a solution for this memory leaks or this memory holes which is happening by using the so called non linear data structure but i have not it justified how is that non linear is coming into the logic okay so for that let me again start using the white board and maybe what i'll do is not do any coding today okay so you understand what do you mean or what i mean by a linked list one is called as a singly linked list in our syllabus that is the aspect that i will be discussing in today's class and the part i will deal in the next class because if i directly start coding this is linked list this is what this is okay so that doesn't make any sense so taking ample time Uh, I mean, enough time because you are. Uh, I think you might have seen the circular that your um, uh, academics are also flexibly, you know, uh, is 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 uh, stretched. Your academic uh, engagement is also stretched. So uh, your last date of instruction is also getting extended. <clears throat> so make use of this. Twenty-seven. Yeah, somebody is saying something. One thirty-two. <coughs> Anybody has any any points to make at this point of time? Why are we studying linked list? Is clear now? Okay. Now I'll start usage of whiteboard again, and I will now justify. what is a singly linked list okay and then uh, subsequently we will start implementing a singly linked list okay so let me start sharing the whiteboard so i am assuming the whiteboard is visible now 
the yeah. whiteboard is visible. Okay, so linked list, which is nothing but a singly linked list, in our case is designed or it is represented by using a self referential structure. Using a self referential structure. So, assume that for the next part of our discussion, my intention is to store an integer array of five elements. I am intentionally taking the array elements as one, two, three, four, and five. is the intention that I have to do. Notice that my first record must not be continuous with the second record. It should be somewhere else. Okay. Please respond. One, one person or the other, please respond. Am I audible? Sir. Okay. Sir. Okay, fine, good. Now, let me start writing a self-referential structure. What is the data? Data is to store five integers. For me, data is important. What is the data? Five integers. What is the data type of your data? Integer. So therefore, you start writing a structure. Okay. Let us say whose name is Node. whose name is node, which is a wrapper data structure where your uh, data is integer. Your data is integer. I hope this is visible. Yes, sir. sir. Yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. You intentionally write, you intentionally write the second fellow Intentionally write the second one as node star p next. What is the definition of uh, structure? Structure is an entity which will allow you to combine anything. Yes or no? A structure is a is a source or it is a means by using which the programmer can able to write anything. Now instead of anything, I'll write a pointer to the same thing called self-referential structure. Yes, are you with me? Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, for better understanding, let me start drawing the memory map. Now, this is my memory map. Assume that this is my memory starting from zero. And uh, as usual, as cited in the earlier uh, discussion, assume that you some uh, some variables are already preoccupied. I'm not uh, drawing that because otherwise it will be disturbed. Okay, so my intention is I have to store one somewhere, two somewhere, three somewhere, four somewhere, five somewhere. That, that is how I'm bringing nonlinearity into my logic, not continuous. Okay, are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, good. So what I will do is, what I will do is, I will now declare node a pointer type which is head, which is pointing to nobody. Any function or in main, wherever you, wherever I want, I can declare something like this. Any problem? I have defined a pointer to a structure saying that head is equal to null, head is head is uh, not having, I mean head is not pointing to anybody, so head is zero, is it okay? Are you following? Yes sir, yes sir. Okay, so every line I need acknowledgement, then only I will proceed. Okay, next, 
since head is pointing to null i'll say that head is equal to okay so what i'll do is i'll say head is equal to probably let me use okay is equal to now i'll say that it is new of node type does it make sense it is equal to new node type clear yes sir now if head is not null that means what is the size of node what is the size size of node size of node is size of x plus size of a pointer so what is the size typically you are talking about this size is nothing but 2 plus 2 theoretically which is nothing but which is nothing but 4 bytes 4 so what are you asking through your logic is okay you must not be having continuous 120 bytes but at least do you have 4 bytes of memory that is what you are asking in in this statement it is equal to new node okay so assume that assume that assume that you have that 4 uh, bytes here assume that 4 bytes there and then with uh, two entries here so what i mean by that is this size is 4 bytes this is 4 bytes let us assume that this address is this address is uh, probably at 100 okay so typically what is happening is what is happening is you have a node I have a node whose address is at one hundred, whose address is at one hundred, which is being named as, which is being named as head node. I think some distance. Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, so now, what is my a of zero? A of zero is this fellow. So now I want to store uh, uh, my data, which is nothing but one. I'll store the data here. What happened? Let us say. Scroll down here. Now, what is this fellow? This is my a of zero. Is my a of zero? Yes, sir, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So and uh, now in this, in this, I have two fields. Two. Two fields in head. What are the two fields? what are the two fields one field is the data x now this is your x that means that means that means what head arrow x is one yes or no head arrow x is one yes sir i am keeping this one here now i'll say that head arrow head arrow pointer to next head is of what type node star type so head arrow x is nothing but one what is one one is nothing but a of 0 where are you uh, storing a of 0 in 100 what are you naming 100 100 you are naming it as head clear also has head arrow p next so 
so that you maintain it as null that means this fellow is x i mean it is not x it is null you following now this is null you following Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is phase one. What is that you have done? You have just created the train engine starting. No voice. No voice. I am not talking. following please focus on its implementation and uh, raise if you have any doubts sir if we use whiteboard it will be somewhat problematic sir why come again if we use whiteboard sir whiteboard yeah it will be it will be somewhat problematic sir why if and uh, and your uh, and your uh, typing was lagging no no typing is lagging that i know but uh, Uh, is the content is visible? I need to know whether the content is visible. Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. Visible. Because I I'll tell my own uh, reflection on this because there is a specific reason why I have used whiteboard. As of now, please follow the strategy. So let me repeat what I have done. We have uh, taken a self-referential uh, structure whose structure name is node. intentionally with a overhead overhead uh, element that overhead element is other than your data your data is x your data is x and you are taking a overhead element which is pointed to the next node such that in phase 1 you are creating a head node pointer initially pointing to nobody then you are asking through the cpu Through your program, that at least give me four bytes, if it is available. Okay, which I am assuming that it is available at the address hundred. I am assuming that it is available at the address hundred, which I am treating it as a head node, which is also called as a root node, which is also called as a root node, which is the starting node of your list. so in this 100 you have two fields one is 100 arrow x and second is 100 arrow p next what is that 100 100 is nothing but head so head arrow x is nothing but my data which is nothing but a of 0 and i am intentionally making head arrow p next as null because i have just constructed the root node first this is not x this is null okay have you followed have you understood the creation yes, not have understood yes sir okay now comes phase 2 second phase now let us assume you want to you want to store the second uh, um, uh, second element which is 2 Shall I proceed? Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. So assume that now in phase two, phase two, what I will do is you write node star temp initially pointing to nobody. Okay. then tell that temp is equal to new type of node again now assume that in phase 2 let me again repeat you have taken a temporary node saying that it is pointing to nobody temp is null now again what are you asking in this uh, temp is equal to new node you are again asking you are again asking how many bytes four bytes four bytes again Sir no. Sir no. Yes sir. Sir yes sir. Yes. 
So I think now you got four bytes. Yes, now you you got four bytes, which is at this location. Just drawing it. Let us assume that location number is maybe five hundred. What is this location number? It is five hundred. What is this five hundred being named as M? Where in this uh, phase two? Now in this uh, in this temp, I also have uh, I also have two entities in this. Sir, no. Now this fellow is five hundred, which I am naming this as temp. I have two fellows. After this statement. After uh, which statement? After temp is equal to new node statement, if temp is available, which is a non-null pointer, that means I got four bytes. Sir, no. Yes, sir. Okay. Now what I can do? What I can do? What I can do is. What I can do is now my temp arrow. X is two. This is two. What is this two? It is half one. Is this two is nothing but half one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you following? Yes, sir. Already. Already head arrow p next was null. This fellow already head arrow p next was null. Isn't it? So what I'll do is I'll say that head arrow which was earlier pointing by p next to null. I'll initialize this to temp. Head is hundred. Hundred arrow p next. Initially it was x. Now I am removing this x. Now I am keeping this five hundred here. Now I am keeping this five hundred here. And I'll keep this null here. And I'll keep two here. Means this fellow from here is pointing to the next node. That means this x you moved here is null. This five hundred you have moved here. So this is head. Head is hundred. Arrow x is one, which is half zero. Now head arrow p next. Earlier it was null. Now it is five hundred. That means what is five hundred is ten. Sir no. Sir no. Yes sir. Yes sir. That means from this fellow, from this fellow now. Okay, maybe. From this, from this point, you are now pointing to this fellow. Here, are you following? Yes, sir. Uh, I think there is a problem with uh, whiteboard. Yeah. Is whiteboard is clear? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Now is it uh, is it visible? Is it visible? 
let us yes sir let, it, let us repeat what is that we have done we have started we have started at uh, head initially i assumed that head is null let me use a pointer uh, yeah is the laser point is visible is the laser point is visible yes sir yes sir so i started with head node so initially i am assuming that head is null then i have created i mean we are typically begging for four bytes once it is available that four bytes wherever it is available which in this example i have considered as 100 i am naming this that as a head which is also called as a root node which is also called as a root node uh i think yeah somebody is scrolling down uh let me yeah so which is available as a no let it let it take time not problem not a problem but you need to understand what i am doing uh, i think some problem is there 146 okay so let me again repeat what is that we have done earlier we started at 100 assuming that 100 as the root node or the head node then head arrow x i am uh, we are initially storing uh, i think is controlling my whiteboard and somebody acknowledge is the whiteboard is visible yes sir sir yes sir. yeah uh, i request please don't uh, draw anything on the whiteboard if at all you have any doubts you use your uh, microphone and then talk to me because it is creating problem for me okay so <clears throat> we have created the root node whose root node address is uh, i think uh, i'll take just quick uh, 10 to 15 minutes shall i take 15 minutes yes okay there is a root node in that root node arrow x is my first element next element i intentionally uh, initially we made it as null then we have created in phase 2 second node which is node star temp is equal to null then another new address which is in this example is 500 now 500 arrow x is my second node which is 2 now earlier my head arrow p next was temp sorry head arrow p next earlier it was null that null i am replacing it with uh, with with 500 okay so when i do that when i do that then i am literally making a link which is linking the first node with the with the second node what is the first node it is the root node I'm just drawing it appropriately so notice that uh, you need to mandatorily draw the arrow because it will tell that from uh, the root node you are going to the next node now is are the addresses are continuous no first element is at which address 100 second element is at which address 500 and is the memory of uh, yaf0 and yaf1 is it continuous no so what is that you are achieving some discrete memory locations which are randomly available as memory holes in heap now a programmer can effectively connect by logical connections which are called as links 
starting from the root node okay so that an array is visualized so we are all doing this in order to store an array not in continuous but at discrete memories at a discrete memories first element is at 100 second element is at 500 so if you are clear i'll go to the third phase and then i'll uh, wind up today's class and we are going to code this in the next class yes sir are you following okay yes sir, yes, sir. now assume that i want to add another node with uh, what is the node value with uh, the node node value of 3 okay now i am into phase uh, go ahead go ahead somebody has some doubts sir one second explain this how, how are you one second explain this how are you ch uh, changing this address sir with a 100 with 500 one second explain okay fine see uh, i started with the node star head is equal to null black i started with nothing node star head is equal to null that means head is pointing to nobody okay next next black head is equal to new node that means i am begging is there any four bytes of memory from my program okay so i am assume, assuming that that address where you have four bytes of memory is 100 so what is 100 it is the address of head our head is pointing to 100 Uh, what are the advantages i'll discuss i'll discuss other questions please hold on okay so uh, i think some student has raised i'm just addressing and i'm again repeating so initially i'm i'm creating a new head a new head with at least four bytes with at least four bytes okay if it is available then what is the type of head it is a node type node star type what is node star? It is a structure type. Inside structure, what do you have? Data and pointer to next fellow. That means inside this, inside head, you have head arrow x. You also have head arrow p next. In that, what is the data x? So head arrow x is 1. So I am storing 1 in 100. And I am holding the pointer node. I am telling that as null. So initially, this fellow, instead of 500, it was that was the first phase creation of head node clear now in the second phase when i am attaching the head arrow p next is null head arrow head arrow p next p next is null p next null means here it is void here it is void no sir no it is, it is it is null null means what do you mean by node star head is equal to null what do you mean by int star a is equal to null a is not pointing to anybody simple it is nothing but zero it is not pointing to anybody that is the last node that is the meaning okay so as of now you have created the head node so that means this is one and instead of 500 you earlier had null yes, sir. now in phase two you have created node star temp is equal to null saying that temp is again pointing to nobody now again you are requesting another four new bytes of memory which whether it is available now i am assuming that that temp is 500 now because 500 is now available this temp fellow internally has temp arrow x temp arrow x is nothing but 2 now what is temp temp is 500 what is the data type of temp it is node star what is the data type of head arrow p next that is also node star so earlier this null I have removed and I have kept this 500. That means I am logically maintaining a link from my root node to the second node. Yes or no? Are you following? Yes or no? Yes sir. Okay. So in the second node, now temp arrow x is 2 and I am making uh, Earlier it was head arrow p next, it was null. Now I am making head arrow p next as this temp. Now finally, what is that I need to make? Uh, I need to write the last statement here. I need to say that this is my end of the train. That means temp arrow p next as 
null. That is what uh, we have written here. Two and then null. Here. Yes, sir. Here. Now let us. Yes, sir. Ah uh, yes. Yes, sir. Here. Okay. So let us assume I want to add another node. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'll do is uh, I'll just go down a little down. So now phase three. In phase three, what I'll do is I'll now make node star temp two another node node star temp two initially pointing to null. I'm just repeating here. Now I'll make temp two is equal to new node type. Is that clear? Can somebody respond? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Now I need to attach this temp two node. Now here temp two arrow x is three. Now assume that in our example. Assume that in our example, this temp two is at uh, probably uh, two hundred. Okay, so I am taking some address here. Okay, so at two hundred, the address two hundred, which I am assuming this as temp two. Which I am assuming it as temp two has two entries. Has two entries. In first entry, I need to keep the data. What is the data? The data is uh, three. That is three. Yes. Data is three. Are you following? following okay so now i will again start from the fifth node it means if i start at 100 if i start at 100 where do i need to attach my next node at the last node earlier it was 2 was the last node isn't it empire of yeah that means what i'll do is i will take node star p is equal to probably head let us take null i'm going to write uh, pseudo code here p is equal to i'll start from head node okay and while head arrow p arrow p next is not null p is equal to p arrow p next now concentrate on this logic this part we will do it later declared p star temp started p with head and then i am iterating i am iterating this entire okay so i am starting from p which is some dummy node p is equal to i am starting from 100 what is 100 arrow p next is it uh, null what is 100 arrow p next? Look at the diagram. 
What is 100 arrow P next? It is 500. Is it null? No. It is not null. Yes or no? Uh, please respond. Yes or no? No, I am yes, sorry. Sir. Yes, sir. So P. P is now changed from the head node. I started at head. Now I am saying that P is equal to P arrow next. Next. P arrow P next. So P head. Now what will be P? P will be 500. Yes sir. yes sir no? Yes sir no. P will be 500. Yes sir no? I am in while loop. I'm yes sir. I am in while loop. So here P will be 500. So 500 arrow P next. Is it null? It is null. Is it null? Yes sir no? Yes, sir. Therefore, I'll stop here. Stopping means uh, this yeah. P is stopped here. Okay. So now this is P. P is temp. Okay. Following? Okay, so earlier. Yes, sir. Okay, so earlier P arrow next was not null. Now because P arrow next is null, you stopped here. Okay, so whatever temp2 that you have created here needs to be initialized. That means P in P you already had P arrow next node, which is at this point is two uh, is null needs to be initialized to temp2 yes sir no yes sir let us assume the uh, address i have taken what is the address i have taken uh, 200 so at this 200 address which I am calling it as temp2 where p was stopped at 500 I am making p arrow p next is equal to temp2 that means now this I am keeping x here next I am drawing this here and this 200 I have to keep here that means what p arrow p next is temp2 that means Earlier it was uh, null. Now this has to be replaced with 200. No. Uh, please respond. Now temp2 arrow yes, x. Temp2 arrow x will be 3. That means you are storing 3 here. Then temp2 arrow p next is null. Okay. That means now you are now maintaining link from that node to this node. What is happening here? A of 0 is at 100 location, A of 1 is at 500 location, A of 2 is at 200 location with a overhead. You are carrying of course the overhead. But overall, instead of begging or instead of asking the continuous memory of 5 into 2 which is 10 bytes, you are asking 4, 4 bytes pieces here and there and you are logically maintaining an array. This is nothing but an array. So this x is, will come here, this 200 will go there, this 200 will sit here. So as a result, as a result, you are maintaining from here to here. Are you following? 
please uh, uh, let, let, let me stop here i will not take uh, yes, sir. this is how you are introducing the non linearity in the programming non linearity non linearity in the programming is getting introduced by using the concept of self referential structures with a overhead of a pointer that points to the same type initially asking the list to be created with a empty head and once the head node is creation is successful from there onwards you can traverse to the entire list so this is called as singly linked list this is called as singly linked list because the link is single only one way if you start from 100 you can imagine something like it is like a train engine 100 is the engine and what are you doing you are attaching bogies at 100 is the engine engine's value is 1 first bogie's value is 2 first bogie's address is 500 second bogie uh, i mean that is the second bogie actually now the last bogie address is 200 and last bogie arrow next is null so the point is always traverse from the head node and how do you know know that uh, the elements are completely traversed if you read the last element whose last element arrow p next is null that means the list is completed that means you have completely read the array so in the next class we will start coding it and this is the reason why i have uh, used the whiteboard because uh, it is very, very i mean if i bombard with the too much content it will not be technically uh, viable in terms of understanding because when you understand from one on one interaction that uh, will be more effective in my opinion okay so i'll i'll stop here uh, i'll open for the questions i think i'm sorry for taking the Uh, extra time of fifteen uh, to twenty minutes, um, but I hope I have uh, reached to at least to, to some extent. But uh, I request the audience to go through the recorded video once. What is that I have done? Okay, so <clears throat> in the next class we'll start the serious coding of data structures. So around uh, one to one and a half week we will be doing the entire data structures. So open for the questions. Use your mic. Sir, in phase three, why we have created a star p? Ah, uh, yeah, that is a very good question. Because if I don't create star p, <coughs> okay, so there is a possibility that I will be losing the head node. I have uh, okay, fine. Ah, uh, I, I I got your point. so i have created star p because uh, i need to traverse the list i need to know i need to start from head node so that i can stop at the last bogie as of now there are only two nodes assume that you have, you already have a list of let us say 20 nodes okay so only for uh, uh, putting this into a generalized code i am using one extra variable star p so that i can start from p is equal to head Okay, you start from the engine, and once you reach to the end of the train, you just use P only for dereferencing the place where you want. Okay, sir. So if you use head, then what happens is, see, uh, if you use head, uh, if you see uh, where P is equal to P R O next, you are making that means you are changing head. in phase 3 in while loop you have to make this uh, this change p is equal to pr on next so if i don't use p i have to change head if i change head next time i cannot traverse i lose my head so if i lose my head i don't know where the train is started <clears throat> did, I, did i answer your question Uh, sir did i answer your question if i don't use p i lose my head because always head will be my last node then you are correcting head so head is gone 
so it will be like a headless train are you following okay sir yes sir yes yeah yeah so also note that this is an extremely very important computational algorithm introduction because without understanding how to code a linked list but before that the purpose of coding and then uh, the uh, the the mechanism or the ways to generalize your uh, linked list uh, um, logics in a generic sense is the actual beauty of a coder okay so i know it, it is little difficult at this point because it is i also found yesterday to <clears throat> try to put forward the content with uh, different animations and uh, other things but uh, at the last i came to a conclusion that only chalk and uh, direct uh, person to person interaction only will help a lot in terms of understanding the uh, linked list okay so let me summarize this and i'll stop here and if still anybody has any doubts any specific doubts i just wait for another one or two minutes everybody are silent everybody is silent let me check how many participants are there 52 okay 52 i think uh, whiteboard whiteboard is it visible yeah it is visible uh, first, first of all let me save this I, I think somebody has asked about whiteboard. Uh, is this whiteboard is uh, helpful? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One problem somebody has mentioned, but uh, I consider this whiteboard uh, as a substitute of the black or green board in our class uh, because uh, it gives the real feel of uh, actual delivering technical uh, topic. that is the reason why i have opted this whiteboard i hope uh, it it is it was clear uh, this is e c e yes sir 2 okay so what i'll do is uh, this recorded video i'll put it in the put it in the uh, <clears throat> groups i came to a feedback that uh, the whiteboard content whatever is been shown is not getting recorded in uh, uh, webex youtube only thing is uh, the audio will be played and uh, you need to uh, keep uh, next to the audio you have to keep this pdf whatever whiteboard that i have used okay uh, some of you have asked the question what is the advantage of linked list so can you answer what is the advantage of linked list compared with an array why to code all this why to code all this memory constraint yeah for extreme memory constraint applications you you don't have any other choice. you don't have any other choice other than linked lists and linked list based programming and the logics are the um, mechanism are the this is this is how the efficiency of the coder is uh, judged both in terms of uh, traversal in terms of node creation and in terms of any other uh, uh, subsequent requirements okay so let me stop here with this introductory note on uh, introduction to linked list with uh, singly linked list in the next class we will take up uh, the actual implementation of a singly linked list without a class next singly linked list with a class and other subsequent logics okay so yeah you know everybody is hungry. One fifty. Uh, let me check participants. Participants, participants. How many, sir? Advantages of linked list over arrays. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Can somebody suggest what is the advantage? I have already spoken one. One is discrete memories can be logically connected. So memory constraint applications based hardware you can implement the. Uh, you can represent the array but what is the other important advantage let us assume that you have an array okay so in the array i want to i want to delete let us say the third element how do you write the logic just think about it you have an array int a of 10 and in that i don't want a of 3 i want to delete it 
How do you write? Just think about it. Now, how do you delete a uh, delete a bogey in this? It's very. You just kill the connections. Okay, so all these logics we'll uh, uh, look up in the subsequent classes. So I'll um, I'll stop here and I'm stopping the recording, and I'll put this uh, post to the lecture. Okay, so next class, uh, please go through the concepts which we have discussed in today's class, and uh, so that you can technically follow what is happening in uh, programming. Okay. Can somebody acknowledge? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Bye.